Well, there's a couple of issues, uh, a couple of scenes in it that were at the top of the whole show that were edited out. So my character was supposed to be dabbling in, in heroin and things like that. Now, I don't know anything about that. So I had to do a bit of stalking <laughs> at night, you know, around the cross and stuff, watching people sort of doze off and things, because I didn't know anything about it. I don't have any friends that have ever dabbled with it or anything, so it was, I had to do, study that. She's also an epileptic, so I watched it copious amounts of videos on that um, and read articles on incest. That's the, bit, that's the most exciting thing about acting is getting into the, the research behind it. I find it so exciting because you get to study about things that you usually would, wouldn't look at for whatever reason. I mean incest is, mo is not a very, um, not a very pleasant issue and you'd usually like to sort of bypass it if you could. So um, it was good look, uh, learning about that kind of thing. I think acting is so good because you get to learn about so many things and be so many different occupations. I think that's why I did it in the first place, because I didn't know what I wanted to do. I wanted to be a vet one day, and I wanted to be a this, that, and the other the next, and this way you get to do it all. <laughs> She's a victim of, of childhood incest, and I think that's, who knows what that, what repercussions that would have on someone's life. I mean, there's a scene in Romper, in Romper where um, she gets a statue and bashes it on the, um, this toilet seat, the toilet bowl, and the father's tied around it. And I really chose to do that quite coldly with him. I, it was actually a choice because, I mean, initially you look at it and you think, oh, this could be a really blubbery scene, you know. Oh, I'll cry here or whatever. But I think, no, I think, you know, the anger that must be in that. She was an angry girl and, and the hurt and everything. I, Jesus, I'd want to kill someone too. I, w I really felt very strongly about that and I thought, no, damn it. I, it's terrible. It was a terrible predicament and a terrible, oh, whatever. I just, I, I thought, I, I don't, I find her very sympathetic. I mean, I can sympathise with her because of what she's been through in the past. And she's just trying to find a family. I think that's one of the biggest things in Romper Stomper that a lot of people that I've spoken to about it, I mean, I've seen it once, that um, a lot of people have seen it a couple of times and, and they talk about the, the racism element or the racist whatever in it. And I think something that comes through it for me, through being through it and reading the script is a sense of family or lack thereof. Well, I thought that, that one of the big things that I found through reading it when I first read it is that sense of family and people trying to find um, a place to belong and trying to find... And the gang found that. That was one thing about the gang that I think, no matter what they're... Um, I don't think it's good, but it, you can see what they're after. You can see that they're trying to find a, a, a father figure, a mother figure. And Gabe was so attracted to that because she could play mother and be a mother and, and have a family that, I mean, her family was so stuffed that, um, you know, I mean, her mother's died and, and um, or killed herself. We're not so sure. I mean, we are sure she did it, but um, it's one of those things that, but, you know, she was just trying to find a family and I think um, that's a sense, that's something, that, an issue that a lot of people have not really picked up on so much when watching Romper. They always talk about the racist elements and I think that's, I mean, in modern day society, there's so much family breakdown, you know. <laughs> it was my first film, for God's sake. I was lost. <laughs> I was sitting there and, and all these big cameras around me. It was quite frightening. But uh, he, yeah, we, I, I had, he rang me a couple of times because I was in Sydney doing a play at the time. And a very different character. I was doing Rebecca, you know, De Maurier's book to Rebecca, and she was a very straight-laced little girl. So he was ringing me up at night, and we were talking and talking about the character in the, the, the um, film. And when I got down there, I had about uh, five days with the 
camera tests and what have you. So we really didn't get much rehearsal. So on the day, um, it was really up to on the day. I'd say, hey, Jeff, Jeff, where are you? <laughs> I'd be sitting on set going, Jeffrey, and this little head would pop up and don't read, come, yeah. <laughs> and he, I got a tremendous amount of help from him. But he's also very, um, he, he's open, very open to ideas, which is great because so often you work with people that are very rigid in there. And, and I mean, I don't know which is good or bad, but it was good for me for him to be open and have answers where you couldn't find them and embrace your answers even if they weren't quite what he wanted in the first place. But he could see, he'd sort of go, oh yeah, yeah, that sounds good. Or, you know, he was good. I thought it was one of the most exciting characters I'd read. You know, I just couldn't wait to play it. I couldn't wait to get in there and do it. Because it's very different. It's a very different kind of woman. She's a strong, um, you know, it's, it's a very different kind of gang mole, you know. Most gang moles are there behind the, top, the guy and uh, behind the head guy and yes sir, no sir, three bags full sir. And this girl was like that for a certain time, you know, but she was snappy. <laughs> she could snap into anything. And it's not ignorant, it's, it is ignorant, but it's not, <laughs> it's just through what we portray in our films or whatever reaches them is about that kind of thing. So it's really important that they see that we have got race problems and that we do have problems that they've got and, and that we are about more than kangaroos and wombats. And I think, um, so it's really important to portray that because of course we're, we've got dysfunctional elements in our society. So it's true to that, to that to that, it's true to that, but it doesn't necessarily say that we generally are dysfunctional. One very rainy night after doing a play, I, I, my agent rang and said, you've got to pick up this script because they're auditioning for it in about a day. And I, so I drove over at about 11 o'clock and picked up the script and I read it, till, read it about twice that evening and just, I just was blown away by it. It was the most original thing I'd ever seen. So I thought, oh God, I'd love to play this role. <laughs> It'd be fantastic. Because it's so different to read something like that when the normal run of the mill scripts are nice. I mean, it's fantastic to have nice films. It's fantastic. It's good to feel good when you've seen something, but this is really different. You don't find a lot of Australian films like it. Anyway, so I learnt this thing, turned up for the day, met this guy, and actually there is a bit of a story because <laughs> Because I, I, I'm not really great at doing screen tests. I get so, so nervous that, and I sort of walk in and go, oh, hi. And it's all really <laughs> tough and really nervous. And I read this article on Matt Dillon, and apparently when he was first cast in a role, uh, the, the director of the film saw him walk in and he was really arrogant and he didn't say anything. He looked at himself in the mirror and he was smoking a fag and he was really... So I thought, I'm going to do that. I won't speak. I won't speak. I'll wait for him to say the first line. So I put on this sort of face and... I just sort of walked in and I sat down and it was silence and I was shaking with nerves thinking, he's going to fucking send me out, he's going to send me away because I won't speak. And finally he, um, and he, he said something and I said, oh yeah. And he goes, uh, you know, I was dancing in monotones doing a Matt Dillon impersonation <laughs> without that cigarette. And finally he goes, well, anything to say? And I said, oh, no. He said, do you want to do the piece? And I said, oh yeah. <laughs> so I did it. And he cast me miraculously but afterwards he told me, I was a bit worried though because you're a bit rude or something like that. And he, he th thought I had the character all wrong because I was playing a real tough <laughs> and really Matt Dillonish, and he thought that was quite inappropriate for the character of Kate. <laughs> she was a much more sexual being. So, but it was, but he cast me anyway, which is quite amazing. I must have had that edge, which was really nerves, but he thought it was some other edge. He was good. He was very good, Russell, to work with because he, he looked he looked after me a lot on scenes like that. And he um, like when he was drowning me in the water, he would dunk me, and it was a wide shot, and we we're facing out to sea. And he'd dunk me, and he'd go, "Okay, you're right, you're right. I'm going to send you under. I'm going to send you under down." And I'd be there going oh, under water. And then he'd pick me up again. He'd go, "You're right, you're right. Down. We're going again down." So he'd look after me like that.
I was lucky to be working with good people that looked after me. Like I remember Daniel in the V scene. Daniel was um, he he completely like just used to cover me with sheets and stuff. And when it was rolling, he'd go right. You right? Are you sure you're all right? It was really good because that they really looked after me. And I mean, it wasn't like I was panicking at all. I was I was fine. <laughs> <laughs> I remember the, the scene with um, Daniel, it was like, we, it was the end of the day and they just virtually had to run the camera and, and Jeffrey, right now, you're going to be there, then you move over, then you roll over, then you do this. And it's all very technically done, thank God. And um, I remember, I forgot which way we were supposed to turn. <laughs> and I turned one way, we fell off the bed <laughs> in a bundle. And it was a funny vibe because these were real characters and they were really all in this game. Because of the nature of the rehearsal period, there wasn't much. We had to do a lot of sort of mock pub sittings in gang. You know, they came out in characters to sort of get, the, get a vibe with the gang happening, which is essential because there's always the hierarchy and they had to work it out. And um, so there was a funny, and I think some of the people on it, I, I mean, I noticed, I, f I felt very outside from the gang for a while there because they they were a gang and they were, the actors sort of became a bit of a gang. Not that there was any any of that method crap going on. Not that method's crap, but <laughs> it wasn't that bad. But there was definitely a vibe happening. And, um, and I don't know, sometimes uh, you can always feel it if it's happening. You can always feel if you start being a bit gayish or you start being a bit whatever-ish in your real life and you think, oh, let it pass sometimes. And if... I, I usually know when it's happening, so I don't find it hard to switch off. No! I could never have done half that stuff in, in Rumpus Domper if it wasn't for Jeff and the Russell and, and Daniel working for people that are so helpful and, and so patient and that, I mean, you just couldn't do it. You, you clam up. As, because you're only working with yourself and uh, sort of fishing into your own emotional pool to find these things in order to create a character, because it's you, it's very, you are exposed a lot of the time. I mean, that's the best thing. I think the best actors, the best performances come when you see the actor actually exposing themselves. And um, I think you can't do that in an environment that is, I think it's, well anyway, you know, I think I've made the point. <laughs>